We are going to begin with some questions that George and I are always hearing. Out in the marketplace, we are going to go through them rapid fire, and then we turn the floor over to you. So wake up, ask questions, and let's make this a fun session. Okay, I ask you first, George. Are fraud- So you can tell these have been pre-prepared. I get the easy ones. Yeah. Um, are fraud and non-viewable impressions the same thing? Now we are getting a ton of questions about this. People believing that if they buy viewable impressions or they adopt viewable impression processes that they're galvanized against fraud. And the truth of that answer is no. They're two very different things, protecting yourself against view fraud and protecting yourself against non-viewable impressions are two very different things. They do have some limited overlap, but they are in fact two different things. Uh, viewable impressions is merely rendering a decision about whether the ad appears in the viewable space of the browser, meeting certain criteria for display or video, and it's completely different than protecting your brand against fraud, for example. It's a different process. So uh, I'm gonna give Cheryl a question. What is the difference between a measurement guideline and a transactional guideline? So th this is actually easier than we think, but it has a nuance that may be rather complex. A measurement guideline, and George is the master of writing measurement guidelines for all media, a measurement guideline tells you this is a standard, a threshold. There is a minimum required for something to be measurable. This is how it is measured. In the digital world, there's also technical standards that clearly play into developing a measurement guideline. So the technology has to work and it has to work in a certain way. Transactions are what the marketplace does. So typically, you have a metric that is supported by a guideline for how to measure by the technology that produces that metric correctly, and then you have what the marketplace does. So the clearest example, the oldest one, television. You have a minimum standard for ratings reporting, and then you have ratings, and then you have pricing. Transactions are what the marketplace does with the information that is provided by the measurements and the metrics. And now to George. How can the MRC audit and accredit a measurement vendor prior to the introduction of a measurement guideline? Yeah, so this question confuses a lot of people uh, because the MRC audits organizations and sometimes will accredit an organization, for example, for viewability, even before we issued the measurement guideline. So people say, how can you do that? It has to do with who we are. We're a very, very unique organization. We were formed about 50 years ago by, or at the request of the US Congress. So the Congress has called on us multiple times when they've had questions about measurement and they've said, have you certified this? Have you accredited it? And they wanna see that we've in fact participated. Our legal counsel tells us that we can't really turn down audits for that reason. If, if a vendor comes to us and says, you know what, we've invented this brand new process to measure a viewable impression, and we go, oh no, we don't have a guideline, they want to be accredited against that. What we do is we execute an audit using our best standards, our best judgment, as much as information as we have available to us, and we can accredit a company on that basis, but then we also try to play catch up with standards. So we execute these lengthy processes to write a standard, and we inform those vendors when that standard's finalized, you have to adopt it. So all this process evolves naturally to accredit a vendor, sometimes in advance of the standards, because if we refuse to audit a vendor, somebody could say, well, you're refusing me the ability to show people that I'm honest and upfront. Um, we try now to get ahead of this problem. So right now we're writing cross-media GRP standards, we're writing social media standards, we're, we're writing uh, digital audio standards, we're 
updating non-human and uh, fraud prevention guidance. We're doing a lot of different things at once because we see more and more vendors with new processes coming to us, so we need to get ahead of that curve. But the basic fact of the matter is that we do audit people even when we don't have standards yet, just using the best guidance we have. Back to the viewable impression, uh, Cheryl, we get a lot of questions about really where does the IEB stand on the question of viewable impressions? So the short answer is our position is like the rest of the ecosystem and we partnered with the ANA and the 4As on what is called 3MS, Making Measurement Makes Sense. And in that partnership, we jointly, through work with executives across the ecosystem, this wasn't a group of colleagues from trade associations sitting down and saying, we should have viewable impressions. These were teams of folks from different disciplines, business leaders, specialists, all sat down and said, what do we need to make measurement make sense for digital media in a cross-platform world, meaning across all media, not just digital cross-platform, for brand advertisers. And the first thing, that the first guiding principle of measurement was viewable impressions. So we, along with our colleagues across the ecosystem, support the use of viewable impressions based on the guidelines and standards that the industry has developed jointly under George's oversight. George, speaking of viewable impressions, can you explain the status of viewable video guidelines and the basic requirements? Smooth, very smooth. Um, <laughs> yes, so we are on nearing completion of the, the adoption of the uh, viewable video guidelines, not necessarily viewable video across the board, but the guideline is set to be released with the lifting of the MRC advisory on June 30th. Uh, we're on track to do that. We've gotten some comments on the guidelines. We're uh, thinking about those, but basically we don't see anything at this point that would turn that date back. So we think that uh, the viewable video guidelines will be ready for release on June 30th. If you haven't seen those guidelines, you should look at them because they are slightly different than the display guidance. Uh, we are setting an opportunity to see standards, so we're not talking about engagement and has everybody seen all the video ad or 50% of it or whatever. We are setting what does it take to have a minimum opportunity to have the ad showing in the viewable space of the browser. That guidance is slightly different than display in that it's 50% of the pixels of the video ad and two seconds, not one second. So uh, I'd call your attention to those guidelines. Just take a look at them and uh, understand them. If you have questions, you know, please feel free to contact the MRC.